Today I have one interesting tutorial for you. So this is again going to be based on a practical job posted on one of the freelancing sites. And in this tutorial I will be talking about Scrappy Crawl Spider. Now if you go through the documentation of Scrappy you will find that you have standard spiders, you have crawl spiders and you have a couple of more types like CSV spiders and XML spider. So in this example, what you have to do is you have to go to a particular site and you have to go and get all the pages where there are H1 and H2 tags. So this is a very straightforward example and this is a good case for crawl spider. So what does crawl spider do? It starts with a page and it follows all the links and of course what links are followed can be controlled and parses them. So let's see how it can be useful. So I've actually striked off this particular URL but this technique will work with every every site that you work with. So I'm going to take this example. So this website is particularly made for learning scrapping. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go through all the pages on this particular site and we will get all the h1 urls h1 tags which are there on this site so let's open the terminal so i'm going to create one spider so this is how we create the spider scrappy gen spider and the name so let's call it h1 spider now here there is one important point that we need to remember. Before we give the name of the spider, we need to change the template. So to change the template, the argument is dash t. And after dash t, value of the template is crawl. So we can actually look at the templates, but for now just remember that dash t is crawl and if you do not provide dash t crawl, it defaults to dash t basic. And finally, we need to paste in the URL. So if you have been following along my tutorials, you know that I don't like to give any URL at this page because Scrappy is not good at creating a proper structure when it comes to URLs. So now we have the this file created so let's look at the directory what we have oops so we have h1 spider.py so let's open visual studio code and h1 spider.py so let's see what all things we need to change so as you can see that this is a crawl spider uh, name does not matter. This is standalone spider. Remember that allowed domain is very important in case of crawl spiders. Because if you do not provide allowed domain, it will go outside the domain. For example, if there is a link to any other site which is outside this particular domain, it will go and follow that. And that is what we don't want and start url can be the home page so these are the two things and you can notice that the only difference is in allowed domain there is no http or anything else it is just this domain so now that we have these two things settled now let's look at the rule so every crawl spider will have a rule and these rules determine what links are followed. So in this example, we can see that the link extractor has a limit of items. So it will be limited to only the URLs where the URL is slash items slash something. But what we want here is a blank. So I'm going to create a blank link extractor so what it will do it will go and take all the links so again allow domain 
start url and empty rule so if you actually look at the definition of link extractor you will see lot of things you will see allow domain deny domain restrict x path and then tags attributes restrict text and then you have restrict css so these are the different ways how you can restrict your crawling method like what all links are crawled this is how you can restrict so what we are doing here is we are creating a blank link extractor so it will go and process everything and you can see here that the callback has been created as parse item so this is again something you need to keep in mind in the basic spider the default callback is used as parse but in case of crawl spider parse is reserved and you are not supposed to use it so do not use parse let it be parse item so let's remove everything and see what we have to do actually we don't need even the item object so what we have to do is very very simple we'll just take response and let's use xpath and in xpath we will take all the h1 tags and we'll take the text and let's use get all so this will give us all the h1 tag and their text whatever text is contained inside h1 this is what we are going to get and this is what we want so how do we return it so instead of returning it as one big list so let's create it let's call it items doesn't matter so for i in items for i in items we are going to yield the text which is items and there is one more thing that we should be returning so in fact you can take it from my personal experience that whenever you are yielding any item always yield response.url as one of the items the reason is it will always helping debugging so what we are doing here is if on first page there are 10 h1 tags found we are running a loop so that there will be 10 items so i have to return this individual item so how do we output to csv file very simple dash o and all h1.csv so this is very simple if we give a file name ending with .csv the data will be sent to csv file if we output to json it will it will be sent to json file so for now let's do csv and we can see that it is running very quickly actually it will go and scrap the entire site but we should never harm any site and i have not provided any time out or i have not slowed it down i'm going to end it i press control c because i don't want it to run forever and go through the entire site and we can already see here that it has scrapped 471 items so now our result is ready so we can see that we have the text and we have the exact url where it was found so we have all the h1 tags and all the pages where this h1 tag was found so this is the beauty of crawl spider and a blank rule so i hope this comes useful for simple jobs like this see you next time